Viva Pinata is a rareware game from 2006 famous for many things. It's bright and colorful atmosphere. It's soothing gameplay where you get to build a beautiful garden. And most importantly, it's brutal lens on late stage capitalism. And what's little capitalism if you don't constantly slaughter your residents for the sake of profit? Can you beat Viva Pinata as a genocidal monster? First things first, we had to name our inevitable wasteland. I decided to name it Char, because that's to name that one by a landslide, and although I'm a genocidal monster, what I am not is a monarch. We then get an opening cutscene reminiscent of many of my first dates, walking towards a woman while she sobs uncontrollably as I get closer and closer. And then she walked away and conjured a shovel from thin air, in which, just like many of my first dates, I decided it was time for domestic abuse. Unfortunately, unlike real life, my actions had repercussions and she stole my shovel. I was dumbfounded, but after approximately 30 seconds I got my shovel back, decided to take out my frustrations on this dumb house, and the worm was so impressed with my display of strength that he decided he should check out my garden. I then whacked my garden about a trillion times to replace all the terrain with dirt, and then I was given a grass packet. I spent an amount of time I'm not comfortable with trying to construct an OO because if there's something my garden needed was that extra element of existential despair. After about 15 years, I then made a worm house and decided it was time for the first stage of capitalism to begin. The best way to be rich is to not be poor. I unlocked sex, and if you're not over 18 you're not allowed to see this section of the video because it's absolutely gratuitous. Avert your eyes if you must. After both parties were satisfied, my sleep paralysis demon came out of her giant egg in the sky, and this is when I realized this wasn't actually sex. Usually the sleep paralysis demon comes out a few minutes after, while this time it was instant. I then did what can only be considered the Viva Piñata equivalent of an abortion, because I thought I had to smash the egg in order for the piñata to come out, but instead I literally just killed the baby. Fantastic. I then made another worm house and had a worm orgy so I could eventually sell off all the children for profit. Then some lamps so I could get some moths, turnips for mice, carrots for rabbits, very typical gardening. After approximately 10 worm children were born I sold off the majority of them, sold one of the homes, got some flowers and some trees from this redditor, and then this piece of shit decided it was time to emerge from its dimension of hell and come into my garden. Despite having man hands that can destroy a house in four swings of a broken shovel, I decided the snail got to live for now. I have plans for it later. I then got my shovel upgraded and could now dig ponds, which was fantastic because as a human being who has basic bodily functions, I like water. So I replaced my Oo's eyes with water, which made it beyond cursed, and as if on cue, unlocked the furry and softlocked the game. Although this train of events seems natural when I say it out loud, I would be lying if I said I wasn't extremely annoyed when it actually happened in-game. So yeah, rinse and repeat, and as much as I hate to say it, as much as my tone of voice will be able to showcase basic emotions, I was starting to feel real attachment to Char, and that attachment only skyrocketed once the Newt Gat arrived. Now, I'd like to consider myself many things, but absolutely none of those things would be able to portray the highly pitched girly squeal I miraculously managed to push out of my body when I saw this thing. And despite it being 3 in the morning, I refused to stop playing until I got this fucker. I found out that it likes these dumb water plant thingies, so I planted like 700 of them and waited for it to return. And then my ants miraculously had such good primal sex that my garden size increased exponentially. And that's not a euphemism, that's actually what happened. And after a literal hour and a half of trying to get this fucking axolotl, it actually happened. He even did a little dance, look at him, fucking, fucking love him. Anyways, I then did what any person would do in this scenario, immediately sell the frog house I built not even two minutes ago and immediately replaced it with a newt gat house. I then got my second newt gat and began romancing them. And this is when I found out that the Newt Gap Romance minigame is actually a goddamn bullet hell. Like, what the fuck is this? After the Dark Souls of Romance minigames was defeated, 
everything was business as usual for a while. Well, except for this poor person I found. He begged me for money, so I did what any reasonable person would do, throw a grand at him and hoped that he would go away. I didn't put too much thought or significance into the number, but surprisingly that's the exact amount you need for him to turn into a shopkeeper. I was honestly anticipating my hard-earned 1k to go straight into funding a hardcore drug addiction, but I guess I'm just an asshole. Other than that though, I would sometimes spruce up my garden with some new terrain, plant some trees and flowers, and occasionally the case of animal brutality, but overall it was a very good experience. Rinse and repeat for a few hours, came back and remembered about evolution. Yes, certain pinatas can evolve like fucking Pokemon, such as this dummy thick fly I found. Do you know how you evolve this? It's actually pretty simple, all you have to do is fucking burn it alive and only pour it out just before it dies. And do you know that fucking operation I did near the beginning of the video? The one that was non-consensual and was probably the most fucked thing I did so far? Yeah, you can actually do that to deform this poor snake into this goddamn disaster. If I knew that this was what we were working with, I would have named this place fucking Alabama. What the hell? Fortunately, you can digivolve your axolotls into salamanders without animal abuse, which is fantastic because I'm not a complete monster, and you need to digivolve your tafflies to have your salamanders bone in the first place, so I unintentionally did a great job at gardening. Go me. Gardening continued as usual for about another hour and a half, some more trees, some new residents, and sometimes a new building. I kind of wanted to name my puppy Bug, but since you and me both know how this video ends, I didn't have the heart to do it. In the next recording, Viva Pinata suddenly changed genres and art styles. Don't know how that happened, it must be some weird foreshadowing for the future. But yet again, business as usual. By this point, I had two objectives remaining until the oncoming apocalypse. First, I need to turn some of these sour piñatas into good piñatas. And secondly... Money. After many hours of grinding, both metaphorically and literally, it was time to turn this garden into an inhospitable wasteland. First things first, there is a cap of what you can place down, but luckily it's split off into segments, so fences, Decoration, trees, all that's going to be split off. So first things first, fences, as the name implies, are fences and keep things out. Who would have thought? I was able to cover two out of four sides with my fences before I wasn't able to buy any more. So for that, I needed to get crafty for the next two sides. I found that the best way to block off the last side was with helper homes. Since all of my helpers would be fired soon, these homes are a gigantic waste of space that, combined with a few other items, can completely form a barricade. Since these are time-gated, as in it takes a while for them to build, it took quite a while for all of them to be finished, but once they are, I had to deal with the last side and the small holes between every home. And for that, I needed toxic barrels. I used toxic barrels for three main reasons. Firstly, they're toxic barrels and are extremely fitting for my post-apocalyptic wasteland. Secondly, they're pretty cheap at only $66 per barrel. And thirdly, they can work as a makeshift wall connecting the fences and some of the previously mentioned holes. After my barricade was formed, there was a few more things I had to do. Firstly, replace all the terrain, primarily dirt and water. Grass is something we're never going to be able to get rid of entirely, but still. Once that's done, we can replace all of our happy structures and homes with, uh, nothing. We're going to tear them down. We don't need them anymore. It's free money. And the word home is kind of gross and almost feels sentimental and, uh, we're not going for that. Here at the Davy Gunface Happy Homes Academy, we have our main aesthetic. Death. Famine. Pestulence, and all around very nasty synonyms. Next step is a real fun one. Eliminate every pinata with great prejudice. All of my beloved creatures that I gathered across the years, they're not allowed to be here anymore. It's really up for a philosophical debate whether or not they're going to a better place, but to be fair, a better place than this is an extremely low bar. 
unless your choice of afterlives is like Hell, Hades, and uh, Purgatory, I'm gonna go ahead and say you're probably set. But in the end, it was violent, it was cruel, their guts lined my gardens before I started selling them off to pay for recent developments, but in the end I assured none survived the onslaught. I could then replace all of my inner terrain with tall grass, but then I have one last problem. Residents trying to get in, and one resident that can actually become a resident. That being the Worm. Worms have infamously low resident requirements, only needing a small amount of grass to survive in. And since our houses are built on grass, I needed a way to exclude them from the garden. And although nothing else can potentially become a resident, if there's a way to also kill anything that enters my garden at all, I'll take it. And for that, I have two solutions. First way is disabling the Tower of Sour. This will allow Sour Pinatas to enter the garden. Although they'll never be able to become residents due to the blatantly low living conditions, and they can still spit out sour candy before dying. Which, by the way, they will die. And the sour candy they spit out will kill other pinatas. So guess what, it's a win-win solution. But just in case, I also decided to construct some Viva Pinata traps. Although it doesn't eat the piñatas, any piñata that tries to enter and eat it will immediately become sick and die as well. Since the only piñata that eats it is the Twinger Snap, which I haven't obtained, hence will not show up. After this, this only ensured one thing. Every piñata will inevitably die. Since they can't move, they will become sick and die. The few that stay long enough to eat anything will die and the only piñata with basic requirements low enough to actually become resident will only be met with inevitable death. After all these hurdles, I had one more thing to do. Dedicate a monument to all of their sins. For this, finally, I needed the snails. I decided that due to their worthlessness as a real animal, and it's probably the only piñata comparable to the one found at the ending of I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, I knew it had to be them. I hired a ruthless hunter to find it, trap it, and deploy it near the newly constructed Banjo and Kazooie statues. And then I gave it a nice little hat and clown nose to make its eternal damnation slightly more amusing, named it Ted for the previously mentioned illusion, and with that, I made an inhospitable garden where no piñata can enter without dying, no person can enter, and happiness can never exist again. And I can say with a large amount of confidence that I beat Viva Pinata as a genocidal monster. As always, thank you to my patrons who helped fund the construction of this apocalyptic hellscape, and I want you to know that your money is not going to good use. Thank you all so much for watching. Here's links and buttons if you want to press them, and as always, all hail God Emperor Bug.